So hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining our workshop session and welcome again to Litmus ChaosCon, our flagship event for the open source project. Now that I really reflect on how far we have come with the Litmus Chaos project, I simply cannot thank you guys enough for making it such a successful project. Uh, so yeah, before we even start the workshop, I think the testament to how chaos has evolved is a large part to how you folks have contributed and supported us. So we have a token of gratitude from our side. Um, starting with the workshop, uh, let me just introduce myself. I'm Nilanjan, and uh, I'm a software engineer working at Harness, as well as uh, I'm a maintainer for the Litmus Chaos project, mainly on the dark side. But uh, yeah, basically, I make sure that all the faults and the documentation is in order. And uh, I have Raj Das with me today. So Raj, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Nilanjan. Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Raj. And I work at Harness as, as a staff engineer. Uh, and I uh, also a contributor uh, and a maintainer to Litmus Chaos. So I've been contributing and maintaining Litmus Chaos from last five years. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's all about me. Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much, Raj. So yeah, with that, let us try to understand the agenda for the next one hour. We are going to learn about resilience probes today. Resilience probes, as you understand, are a way of defining your chaos hypothesis and measuring the impact upon your target application. So if that all sounds a little bit gibberish, don't worry, we have you covered. So yeah, we welcome all the beginners, we welcome all the intermediates, and we also welcome all the advanced you will definitely have a lot to learn today. So without further ado, let's actually dive into the workshop. But yeah, before that, what even is chaos? Let's talk a little bit about chaos before we start the workshop. In order to understand chaos, we need to understand what motivates it. So yeah, understanding what is a downtime is a good place. What causes a downtime? And it's a very important question. Sure, we have all been there and experienced it, and perhaps even multiple times, but it never gets easy. A downtime has several adverse effects for any organization. Take instance of Slack, whose SLA violations led to an 8 million payout and gravely impacted the company's revenue. Wells Fargo, the financial giant, suffered a power shutdown in our data center due to smoke, which caused a loss of transactions and some direct uh, deposit checks were not deposited. So in this case, a single hour of downtime costed them over $100,000. Lastly, British Airways had to cancel 400 flights, which led 75,000 passengers getting stranded and costed them over 100 million in losses. So in this case, it was a debugging issue in one server that cascaded to other servers, in which impacted in the billing systems. And of course, very recently, we also remember the crowd strike outage which caused over 8.5 million Windows devices to be completely unusable and caused a loss of over $5.4 billion. And that's the figure only for the Fortune 500 companies. Therefore, a downtime is often a result of a combination of issues, as we understood. So with ever-increasing complexity of cloud-native microservice applications, the question is how can we ensure that our distributed systems always withstand the adverse and potentially unforeseen situations? How can we determine with confidence that the resiliency of an application is withstanding given the adversity of the situations? So let us actually try to better understand it in context of what are the existing solutions for these problems. And the question that we should be asking ourselves is, why are we not better at managing downtimes? And there are majorly three reasons for this as we identified it. First of all, the microservices are prone to downtimes. While one can prepare for the apparent causes that need attention, no one can fully anticipate an overwhelming downtime before it actually takes place, since there are a plethora of ways in which things can go wrong. And that's where chaos engineering provides a good alternative. It provides a way in uncovering the weaknesses in a system and becoming better prepared at managing these various scenarios, as we'll learn later. 
Secondly, chaos failure scenarios can be difficult to run while ensuring the safety of your target resources. And often there isn't a good culture around it as well, which makes it even more difficult to implement and scale. Lastly, as more volume of code gets pushed over time in any organization, it becomes very difficult to assess the system against the weaknesses at scale due to the lack of a good CI-CD pipeline of chaos integration. And this uh, integration is definitely required at the development stage as well as in an SRE or a later stage where you can scale it up effectively. So this results in a failure to effectively me uh, measure the impact of the faults automatically at scale, which in turn causes difficulty in anticipating the resilience of the application. So let's try to understand this problem in a better context now. Consider this, your application now being cloud native stands atop of other uh, plethora of other services that determines its functioning and resiliency. So you have your application dependencies, then the other cloud native services provisioning the underlying infrastructure, then the Kubernetes services itself, and lastly, the platform on which your application is deployed. So as you understand, failure in any one of these services can cause your entire application to not be able to cope up. The problem is only accentuated as more amount of code is shipped more frequently at a weekly or even shorter cadence, which is expected to run in a different environment. So this unpredictability of the application behavior is the prime cause for service outages since there is no reliable way to know how our application will behave when subjugated to an unanticipated situation. So here's where chaos engineering provides a way to effectively mitigate as well as assess your application's resiliency. And how does it work? Well, chaos engineering is a series of steps which you do uh, iteratively in accordance to how your application uh, resilience uh, comes out to be. So in the very first step, you select a system to test. So let's say you have an application that is running in Kubernetes, a cloud native application, and you want to test a certain aspect of that application. So in accordance to what you want to test, you will select a chaos experiment. So you will, you will, you should be able to like, choose a chaos experiment from a wide variety of experiments, which will help you in turn create diverse chaos scenarios. Then you will run those set of chaos experiments on your target application in order to prove your hypothesis. If your hypothesis stands, that is upon analysis, when you will see if it stands or not, uh, if your hypothesis stands, then it basically means that your application is resilient. That's a good news because your application is now ready to withstand any impact that is caused by the kind of impact that is caused uh, by your experiments. However, if your hypothesis fails, if whatever you were expecting does it stand true, then you essentially start from the beginning again. You decide upon the kind of test that you want to perform after making sure that you are making some changes to your application such that it is able to now withstand the chaos uh, faults that you had selected earlier. So yeah, it's basically a long process where you are trying to reach to a point where your applications are healthy and they are able to withstand the uncertain events that may happen during the deployment of the application. So if that sounds like a lot, then the question is, how can you simplify this process? Because chaos engineering in its fundamental assesses the application's resiliency at scale, and you need to do it very frequently. But the question is, how can you do it effectively? How can you make the process simpler? Well, that's where uh, Litmus Chaos can help you. Litmus Chaos is basically nothing but a chaos engineering tool that helps you perform chaos engineering into cloud native environments. So uh, what does a good chaos engineering implementation even look like? 
well as far as the general best practices go chaos engineering is a culture oriented approach which finds its place as part of the devops practices and hence developers and asari should work together for the best results while developers should run the experiments from an early stage in the development and slowly scale up to cover all the different kind of chaos scenarios that are possible SRE should focus on how to make the chaos engineering practices scalable enough to run into the CI CD pipelines as well as execute the set test within the staging and eventually in the production environment also it is paramount to have a robust set of chaos experiments that can cover all the different kinds of failures that you potentially might want to inject in your application just for an example you might want to inject network faults you might want to inject a uh, resource uh, spike fault such as cpu outage or memory uh, constraints so these all uh, faults should be available to you and lastly you also need a good observe uh, you need to be able to uh, observe the impact of the chaos throughout the system and hence your chaos engineering tool should provide with enough insights that can help you understand if the application is deviating from its steady state in an unanticipated manner or not so basically litmus chaos can help you achieve all of these objectives litmus chaos is helpful for both developers and sres while developers can start from an early stage and implement their chaos experiments uh, for all the different kind of scenarios that they might face during the deployment of the application they can also ensure that they are left shifting the resilience so this helps in building up the application's resilience from the ground up as the application is built up incrementally on the other hand sres can make sure that the chaos pipelines that are being developed by the developers can be scaled up for all the different microservices they can ensure that the adoption of the chaos faults is at a greater scale and throughout all the microservices that are present as part of the application deployment as well as they can implement the chaos assisted uh, observability that is they can ensure that the different metrics that are required for observing the result of chaos experiments are implemented properly or not as we will understand in our workshop better it basically means that you should have apms you should have enough amount of logs and uh, events for kubernetes in order to assess how your application is performing so what does litmus chaos provide you at the heart of it litmus chaos as a tool provides you with a robust set of experiments and it is a lot of different experiments spanning not only across kubernetes but also different cloud native uh, platforms such as aws gcp azure uh kubernetes included and also bare metal and so on you also get the support of chaos workflows which provides you a declarative way to define your chaos intent so that you can define all of the chaos uh, faults that you want to target against a specific application in a simple and declarative manner it also allows you to collaborate with your team so that you can define different acls and role based access controls and therefore you it, this helps you in containing the blast radius by providing the appropriate amount of access to the uh, respective stakeholders lastly you can also templateize your experiments you can save them for later as well as you can share them with your teammates so what this basically results into is you can drastically improve your recovery time as you will be better prepared even before a outage happens your teams can be better prepared at handling the outages since they would have practiced that chaos scenario much before it also helps you in reducing the cloud costs so for example if you have a dr setup a disaster recovery setup you can validate it using chaos engineering using litmus chaos and therefore you can be certain that whether the resources that you are provisioning are sufficient and you are not over provisioning the resources in your disaster recovery and this in terms helps you greatly save cloud costs and this 
over the time helps in building a resilient application and develops confidence in your application, which in turn results in good business revenue and it helps in significantly reducing service outages. So yeah, that's a lot of theory about Litmus Chaos. Now it's time for a workshop. So as part of the workshop, we have a lot of things planned for you. I'll just go to my Litmus Chaos panel here. So you can see that this is the Litmus UI. As you land in the Litmus UI, you will get to see such a dashboard. For the newcomers, don't worry. I'll walk you through the different screens of the Litmus Chaos now. So every Litmus Chaos has a project. Eventually, uh, when you are creating your Litmus Chaos, when you are installing it in the beginning, you will get a default project, which is the admin project, actually. So herein, we can see at a glance that what are the resources and different uh, attributes of our uh, project. We can see that we have quite a few recent experiment runs, which we'll see in just a short while. And uh, we have a chaos infrastructure also upon uh, inside the total number of infrastructures, we see one. We'll understand what is a chaos infrastructure as well as a chaos hub is there. Under the chaos experiments tab, we can see that we have the five experiments that we got to see in the overview page. We'll dive into them shortly, but before that, we have something known as an environment. An environment is nothing but a way to package the different targets that you have inside your uh, target environment. So let's say that uh, I want to target various different Kubernetes clusters. So each one of them can be grouped under different environments. So we have only one environment right now named fraud. If we see inside, we can see it's called the boutique infra. But even before that, what is a chaos infrastructure? A chaos infrastructure is nothing but a piece of uh, agent that basically helps in connecting the litmus control plane to inject chaos into your target applications in your uh, target execution plane. So essentially here in our context, Boutique Infra is nothing but a Kubernetes application, which is basically running in a Kubernetes cluster and Boutique Infra helps us target that uh, application as we'll see. But uh, more importantly, Boutique Infra is an agent which, uh, to which the Litmus control plane can communicate. It can ask it to, hey, run uh, XYZ experiment upon the uh, application that we are targeting. So yeah, it helps you to basically scale up your chaos experiment across different targets. So we have only one chaos infrastructure right now, but similarly, you can connect more chaos infrastructures. So uh, we will see how this chaos infrastructure looks like in practice. Uh, but before that, we also have something known as resilience probes. Aha, uh -huh. This is the heart of our workshop today. We'll learn how to leverage probes to effectively measure your chaos hypothesis and how you can uh, better uh, you can better develop probes that will be effective in measuring your chaos intent. So we have quite a few probes here. As you can see, each one of those probes has a type such as HTTP probe or Prometheus probe or CMD probe. I'll keep that a secret. Raj will tell us later that what these are about. But basically, a probe is nothing but a way to measure the chaos intent, as Raj will tell us later. Next up, we have Chaos Hub. A Chaos Hub is a cornerstone in how you practice chaos engineering because this is where you keep all your chaos experiments and forms. Right out of the box, you can see that we have 10 chaos experiments that are provided to you by default uh, as part of the Enterprise Chaos Hub or the default chaos hub. And you can see the different chaos faults here. So we have 51 chaos faults uh, in this uh, chaos hub already, which are provided to you by default. And it enables you to you know, target your chaos intent across a variety of different uh, cloud native platforms. So that includes AWS, Azure, GCP, Kubernetes, Spring Boot, VMware, you name it. So yeah, that's a fair uh, introduction to the Litmus Chaos UI. Now, let us actually try to see a dashboard and try to understand what does it do. 
Well, we have the boutique application. The boutique application is nothing but a cloud native application, which is deployed into Kubernetes, as I told you before. And we'll see that as Raj will describe it. But before that, we have an observability dashboard here. And as you can see, it's nothing but a Grafana dashboard. I can spill some beans here and tell that it is being powered from a Prometheus time series database. So uh, let us try to understand that what are we measuring here? As part of uh, this uh, Prometheus, uh, excuse me, in this Grafana dashboard, we can see that we have a probe success percentage, which basically determines that whether our application is reachable or not. So here we are measuring it in terms of percentage. 100% means that we are able to access our application and everything is healthy. Next up, we have the node CPU utilization. It basically says that how much of our total node CPU capacity are we using right now? So as you can see, our utilization lies somewhere between 15 and 16%. So that is uh, the steady state metric that we have uh, for how much node is being consumed by our uh, Kubernetes cluster where we have installed our target, that is our chaos infrastructure. Next up, we have these uh, graphs. So we have on the left-hand side, the QPS, and on the right-hand side, the access duration. QPS corresponds to queries per second, and it corresponds to how many queries per second are we able to do for a given microservice. So we have quite a few microservices as part of the uh, boutique application. As I said, it's a microservice application, so there are different microservices. So one of them is, let's say, front-end microservice. And we can see that currently the number of QPS is averaging between 100 and 150 operations per second, which means that we are able to reach out to that microservice applications this many times in a second. On the other hand, you can see also in the legend that there is a yellow marking over here, and that determines the failure rate, or more specifically, the 99 percentile failure rate when we are not able to actually reach the application. So uh, we'll later see that how that plays out when we are actually injecting the chaos. On the right-hand side, we have the access duration. An access duration can be roughly corresponded to the latency. So we can see that it takes us close to 32 and 36 millisecond to access the front-end uh, microservice right now. So that is the access duration or the latency uh, with which we are able to access the front-end microservice. Similarly, we have other microservices as well, namely cart or product or checkout. And then we also have the access uh, duration for the same, you name it. So yeah, with that, uh, I'll invite Raj to you know decompose these different parts and show you under the hood that how do these microservices fit in together within Kubernetes and also show you the boutique application in all its glory. So yeah, with that, Raj, over to you. Uh, hey, hey, Nilanjan, hey, everyone. Uh, thanks, Nilanjan, for the great introduction. I, I, I learned a lot. I didn't know much, uh, some some areas where I didn't know. So thanks for the great, uh, great explanation. Uh, let me quickly share uh, the screen. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully my screen is visible, right? Uh, and London, uh, can you uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, so let's talk a little bit uh, more on the resiliency probes. So, so resiliency probes are one of the key features in Litmus Chaos. So it is designed to assess the impact of Chaos experiment when uh, the systems are under test, when you execute experiment, when these are under test, these are very useful. The goal of these uh, probes is to continuously validate the system uh, is remain uh, resilient or not during the disruption also. So the probes are act as a checkpoint that ensure uh, critical components are still operational and and it is uh, it is meeting the predefined conditions which we set uh, before executing the experiment, right? And these are as you mentioned, uh, like uh, these are pluggable checks uh, that can be attached uh, during the chaos experiment. And we support uh, four kinds of probe. The first one is HTTP probe. So as name suggests, the HTTP probe basically validates if an endpoint, HTTP endpoint, uh, is uh, 
is uh, giving us the correct result let's say i am uh, i am calling an http endpoint and if the status code is 200 then i am saying that this probe is passed or failed so uh, http probe is supported uh, in like https mode also and http mode both and you can compare the values based on the operators and uh, we'll i will check uh, in our demo and the command probe uh, is basically where you can write uh, uh, command custom commands also like uh, you can also write uh, some curl commands to call some apis or uh, some uh, linux uh, uh, let, let's say linux top command you can use to check if uh, uh, if the cpu uh, is uh, having the correct uh, value or not during the execution of the experiment and the next one is the prometheus probe so prometheus probe basically checks the prometheus uh, and checks the promql and it validates the value which we set uh, with the operator and based on the condition it uh, makes the probe pass then fail then we have the last one that is the kubernetes probe kubernetes probe is basically uh, the it basically checks the kubernetes resources are present or not and based on the condition it uh, it uh, make make the probe pass then fail so now uh, we have uh, 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 we have, we can go to the demo. So uh, in this demo, so uh, we'll target uh, one of the uh, e-commerce application. It is called online boutique application. So just a quick uh, walkthrough to the product. Uh, so basically, it has multiple products you can see, and each product uh, has uh, different pages. And once you go to the pages, you can add the item to the cart. And once the once you are okay, you can place the order. So it has a lot of microservices behind it. So I'll show you the microservices. Uh, so if I go to the boutique namespace, you can see these are the microservices like card service, checkout service, currency service. And uh, like uh, there are approx uh, 19 uh, microservices, right? So we are going to target one of the microservices and uh, check the hypothesis and, and check the probe also. So uh, let's, uh, before that, we have the Grafana dashboard as uh, Nilanjan mentioned. So where we can check the real time uh, data and how the uh, components are uh, performing during the chaos. So right now you can see uh, everything is green. So everything is under the threshold value. And uh, these are some of the microservices and each microservice has a, a query per second dashboard and the access duration dashboard and overall as a probe success uh, dashboard right and we can uh, we also have a, uh, a system on a system or infra level dashboard that is the node uh, dashboard right and uh, now we can go to the uh, experiment page so in this experiment uh, uh, we are going to uh, have four different kind of experiments so the first one is uh, to kill the card service network so if you see uh, there is a card service right so we are going to uh, break the network to the card network service so that uh, it, it will fail to order or it will fail to proceed from the page to the checkout page, the right? product page to the checkout page. So here we have the experiment already pre-configured. And if you go inside this experiment, we have the pod network uh, loss, right? So, and if you uh, open this modal or uh, the sidebar, you can see the app kind is deployment because our application is a, is, a, is a deployment then it is under boutique namespace and how to identify or target that particular application right we have the label so if i go and uh to kubectl get pods minus and boutique show labels right i can find this label right so i am targeting this uh, this this has to be unique otherwise it will target uh, any random so suppose if it is a common label then it can target the other uh, other uh, deployment of pod also so we are we are going to target this service card service and that's why we have added the label and uh, the next page is the fault configuration page so where uh, we have mentioned like uh, for how much duration we want to do the chaos so we want to do it for one minute 60 seconds uh and uh and the network loss percentage we are going to target 100 percent network loss so uh, if uh, so 50 percent means it can pass sometimes and it uh, it can uh it will not pass sometimes but with 100 percent it will block all the network connectivity to uh the card service right and with that we have assigned some uh resiliency points uh so the it's 10 by default so we don't have to uh, configure the other properties and quickly we can go the proof so now 
as I mentioned earlier, we have different kind of probes, right? So let's uh, see what are the probes we have added in this experiment. So in this experiment, we have added one network latency check, right? And another one is HTTP check. So let's quickly go to the probe page and see what are the values defined in the uh, uh, in, in these probes. So first one is the Prometheus probe. You can uh, see by the type, right? If I go inside, right? So I can see there is a Prometheus uh, probe configuration. And in the Prometheus probe configuration, I have mentioned a Prometheus query. Like uh, if the probe duration is less than uh, 20 seconds, right? And uh, it should uh, call this uh, Prometheus endpoint, which is also available in this cluster. Uh, and it will call this Prometheus endpoint. It will query this from uh, from query. And if the value is less than 20 seconds, it will pass the probe. Otherwise, it will fail the probe. Right. So that is the condition we have uh, set. And these are some of the values we can set, like what is the timeout of the probe, and how many time we have to attempt if the probe fails, or if even if probe fail, how many time, or how many times we have to uh, uh, check this probe. Then interval, uh, how, uh, like if the if after the first item, how uh, what is the interval between the second retry? So and uh, and these are some of the values which uh, we can uh, skip uh, for now. And le let's go to the next probe which we added. So the next uh, probe is the card service uh, HTTP check. So card service HTTP check is a HTTP kind of a probe. And if I go inside this probe. You can you can see uh, I'm calling uh, a HTTP endpoint. This is the FQDN, and we are checking uh, a get. Uh, so because it's a uh, publicly available, so we are doing a get uh, get method, and we are checking if the response is 200 or not. If it is 200, then it will pass the probe. Else it will fail the probe. So these are the two probes we have added to this experiment, and let's trigger this experiment and see if the probe passed or failed. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, so this is uh, so this is the experiment. Uh, car, kill card service network. So we are going to break the network of card service. So let me trigger this one, and it will take few time, uh, few uh, few time to execute. So uh, it has multiple steps. Like you can see, first it will install the fault configuration to the cluster, right? And uh, once it is installed, uh, so it is installing now. So once it installed, then it will do the actual uh, kiosk, uh, that is the pod network loss on the card service. Then after that, it will uh, it will try to clean up all the resources uh, from that uh, from the cluster, right? So uh, it will it will take a few seconds or uh, maybe few minutes. Uh, meanwhile, do we have any questions, uh, Nilanjan? Uh, we can take uh, in between. I saw one question from Venu Dharmapuri. So he asked that shift left resiliency is a good idea. What are the driving principles to achieve this? And what are the outcomes and how to track them? Um, I tried to answer it, but let me just answer it for the greater audience as well. The yes. whole idea behind left shifting the resiliency is to introduce the idea of resiliency early on, right from the development stage. And how does that help us? Well, left shifting resiliency will make sure that we are introducing the idea of resiliency from the ground up. So we have right now different uh, ways of ensuring that our code is efficient and it uh, withstands in our production, such as we define unit tests. Uh, we basically make sure there are less number of vulnerabilities. Why not add chaos tests as well as part of your validations? So this will make sure that your application is resilient from ground up and it kind of offsets the responsibilities that are usually right shifted. Often we think that uh, it's, a, it's the respons responsibilities of SREs to determine the resiliency of an application to make sure that the application is running. But uh, I would like to disagree with that statement. It is the it is the common goal of both developers and SREs to work hand in hand in order to make chaos a success. So if we have the different chaos experiments right up from the beginning uh, of our development cycle, then the SREs should be able to scale them up for the other parts of their application as well. Let's say you have a pre-prod environment, you have a QA environment, you have a prod environment, then the SREs will be able to better take up those uh, uh, those pipelines and able to introduce chaos into those environments. 
Similarly, if you are able to uh, like free up the SREs, they are also able to improve better observability for your entire application. As I quite often say, observability is the uh, foremost pillar of chaos engineering. Without observability, you are just doing chaos. So uh, essentially, that's what corresponds to a good chaos engineering practice. And it definitely impacts in the greater adoptability and success that you gain out of chaos engineering. So that is the tangible outcome that you will hope that is the question. Uh, thank you, Nilanjan, for answering this question. So I, I think uh, our experiment has started. So as you can say, uh, as you can see, right, uh, it has completed. Uh, I'll, I'll go to the status later. So, but we can see the status in the Grafana, right? So within that the last five minutes, right? So we can see there is a downtime, right? Uh, because we killed the network and the probe success percentage went down from uh, 100 to zero. You can see the dip, uh, dip right? And the daisy annotation of chaos over it. So you can see that the days uh, actual chaos happened, right? And uh, it has now come back to the, after we killed the network, it uh, came back to the uh, original state, right? So let's check the uh, experiment, what uh, why it is uh, completed with failure, right? So this status is completed with failure. And I'll just quickly go back and refresh it. Yeah. So you can see the middle step has been failed. So the first probe failed uh, because you can see uh, the Prometheus query, uh, it it got 445 seconds, something, uh, and it is expecting like uh, 20 seconds. Uh, it, it should less than 20 seconds, right? But our duration is like because of the uh, timeout, it, it went from like, I'm, uh, around 440, 444 four, um, seconds right so uh, due to the uh, due to the condition uh, it failed uh, the condition didn't met and it failed and the second one why it failed is because we are trying to call this endpoint http endpoint and uh, because of the timeout it uh, like the default timeout was 10 seconds maybe so due to the timeout it got into uh, error state or, or it failed due to the uh, timeout Right, so these two probes fail. Ultimately, the experiment failed. So with this experiment, we validated the, the probe uh, during the experiment. The probe uh, should met the condition. Otherwise, uh, uh, otherwise, the it will impact uh, the real microservices. Right. So this is one of the experiment, and the second experiment we can take is uh, uh, the spike uh, increase the CPU spike of the card service. We'll do a uh, spike in CPU uh, in the card service. So uh, let me again go to the experiment. And uh, if you see this experiment, right, we are targeting the same application uh, card service. The namespace is boutique and deployment. And if I uh, expand the tune faults, we can see the duration is again 60 seconds. We are doing it for one, uh, one core CPU. And, and these are some of the default values. We don't have to reconfigure it. And uh, in the probes, if you see, uh, we have one uh, uh, probe that basically checks the HTTP, which we already uh, added in the previous experiment, basically checks the HTTP endpoint of the card service if it is working fine before the test, because it it has different kind of modes that I'll go uh, after this. So uh, this is doing a, a start of the uh, test. It is checking the HTTP uh, probe. And on the kiosk, it is uh, basically checking the CPU uses. So let, let's go to this group and uh, let's expand the details. So uh, if you see this CPU uses, right, it's a, uh, it's a CMD pro. Uh, so CMD, uh, we can add any commands, right? kubectl command also we can add. So in this uh, kubectl command, you can see we are doing a kubectl talk and uh, we are getting the CPU, right? If the CPU is less than a certain uh, threshold, so I think the threshold will be visible after we add it. Let's say the threshold is uh, 30, uh, uh, 2 millicore CPU. Uh, if it is less than 32 millicore CPU, we uh, mark this probe as passed. Otherwise, it will fail. So we can just copy and uh, paste it in the uh, in the terminal to check if it's working or not. So it is working. So you can see uh, it is giving me 20. So if I apply without the flags and all so i can see the, the it's 20 milli core cpu right and if it increased during the kiosk it should fail right uh, because we have a probe assigned to it so let me go inside the experiment and you can see the probes are already added 
and let me just run it here so yeah uh, so it will again uh, yeah it started so it will again uh, uh, go through the same steps installing of the kiosk faults then uh, 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 then it will perform the actual kiosk then it will clean up so meanwhile we can go to the probes and uh, uh, try to explain uh, like try to understand what are the different kind of modes right uh, which probes can execute uh, let me edit uh, yeah let me create a new uh, probe so let's create this probe uh, okay uh, let me go inside any of the experiment try to add a new probe let's take an example of this probe yeah so these are the modes i, I i'm trying to uh, explain uh, so this uh, uh, the probe start of the test it will execute when your experiment started uh, before the experiment started so it will just uh, try to check the http or any other uh, probe which you configure right before the experiment and if it passes it will allow the next experiment uh, next phase to start or it will fail uh, uh, according to the condition right and the, another one is the end of the test that basically uh, runs after after we execute the experiment and uh, after uh, during the end process of the experiment we execute this probe and they, there is a edge mode where we uh, check both in the start of the uh, experiment or uh, end of the end, end of the experiment we both uh, check the probe and based on the condition we pass the probes out. Uh, and the second one is a continuous which will execute from the beginning of the test uh, be beginning of the experiment till the end of the experiment and during the kiosk also it will uh, it will perform this probe uh, and then the last one is the on kiosk so uh, so after it started right during the actual kiosk the middle step which i, I was uh, showing right so during that phase it will uh, try to execute this probe so these are the uh, five modes we have right now uh, and based on the probe mode it, it also uh, it can also uh, determine the condition right and uh, le let's go back to our experiment and i, I think we can see the uh, we can go back to logs and let's see the dashboard right so you can see the, there is a slight uh, hike in the cpu let me put a top command also maybe it will start Um, uh, Nilanjan, do you have any other questions? Yeah, yeah, we have quite a few questions. Thank you, folks, for asking such uh, informative questions. So I'll just try to answer all of them. So Ganesh who asks, uh, where we need to install Chaos Q Kubernetes cluster? Yes, uh, Ganesh. So as we saw, Chaos infrastructure is nothing but an agent which you need to install in the same cluster where your target application is running, where your target Kubernetes application is running. So the advantage that you get out of Litmus Chaos is you can have one control plane and several different uh, execution planes, that is several different targets, target Kubernetes clusters, where you can target the different Kubernetes applications. Moving on to the next question, uh, Venu asks, is there source for these probes in GitHub? Uh, we can uh, definitely try to look into that. We can definitely try to provide these uh, probes for you. Next, uh, Venu again asks, are there specific metrics Litmus relays to provide these insights? Uh, by insights, I'm guessing you are talking about uh, the chaos uh, like result, those kind of insights. Because see, uh, the kind of insights that, Lit that Litmus provides is, for example, this annotation that you see in your screen currently, this is provided by the Litmus. It determines that what was the chaos duration through which the chaos was actually injected. Then uh, it also gives you chaos result. And it's a neatly compacted form of the entire experiment result that what did it uh, manifest into what passed what didn't pass and so on so more of that you can definitely see into your ui or access them using apis as well next question by muhammad azwan uh 
Yasat, uh, is Grafana dashboard required for separate installation or it is bundled with Litmus GitHub? Uh, no, Mohammed. like we do not package Litmus Chaos with any APM tool, but then it can be used with any APM tool that you already have. As I said before, uh, observability is very crucial for Litmus Chaos, for uh, performing chaos engineering, because without observability, you won't be able to realize how your application is getting affected during the chaos. So essentially, uh, you would want to keep all your uh, observability uh, APM tools into the same uh, pane where the Litmus Chaos is running so that you can use the different probes or other different uh, tools in order to understand how your application is behaving. And on top of that, you can then build uh, different probes using the CMD probe as uh, explained by Raj earlier. Right. So with that, I'll definitely come back to all the questions, but I think the fault has completed. So Raj, what do you yeah. So uh, I, I'll go back again and check the status again. Yeah. So again, it, it is completed by failure and we'll check why it is failed. Right here you can see we've attached two probes and one of them are failed. like one is passed, one is failed. And let's check the HTTP uh, probe, uh, the first one. The first one says uh, the endpoint is uh, the endpoint was available uh, before because it was start of the test date. Right? The endpoint was accessible and it was giving 200. That's why the first case passed. Then second case failed because uh, the actual value uh, of the kubectl top command right, which we applied. Right? So it was around 47. But our expectation is it should be less than 32. Then we can say this probe is passed or failed. Uh, this probe is passed, right? So now we can uh, see that we are getting 47. That's why this probe uh, failed. And ultimately, the experiment failed. With, uh, it is completed, but it will failure, right? You can see. And it also impact the resiliency score. Like you can see the 50% resiliency score because one is passed, one is failed. And due to which uh, you can consider this is a 50% uh, resilient application, right? And uh, and the, the next one we have is the node. Uh, we are going to uh, increase the node. Right. Uh, so our application so is uh, let's say this card service, right? If I check this card service, this card service is assigned to a node pool. So we have created a node pool, dedicated node pool for this boutique uh, services, right? And our affinity is set for this card service. Uh, let's uh, show you. Uh, We can see uh, this uh, card service. Card service is uh, uh, card service is scheduled to this pool. Uh, there is only one node in the pool, and what we are going to do is we are going to target this uh, node pool uh, or this node. Like we'll increase the CPU and we'll see uh, if uh, if the probe passed the will. So let let's go to the experiment first. So let me go inside the experiment, and this is the CPU hog experiment. And here we are doing it for 120 seconds, and uh, we are targeting this node, right? Uh, this 5K C3. You can compare 5K 5K C3, and other others are like default values. We don't have to reconfigure. Now let now quickly check the uh, uh, probes, right? So now we have uh, two kind of pro uh, probes. One is the CMD probe, and one is the Prometheus probe. So both are in continuous mode. That means it will uh, start running uh, during the start of the experiment till the end of the experiment. Right. Let's quickly check this node CPU uh, probe. So this probe is configured like it will doing a top nodes. So previously we had uh, done uh, the kubectl top probes, uh, uh, pods, top pods. Now we are going to do a top node uh, and check the. Uh, value of the CPU, right? If I apply the same command here, I can see the current value is 12 and I can remove all the flags and see the raw value. So I can see that the, uh, the CPU is 12%, right? And now expectation, let me edit this to view the expectation. Now expectation is it should be, it should less than 50, then we can consider this probe as passed, otherwise failed. Right, so this is one of the probe, uh, and the second probe we are having is Prometheus probe. Again, here we have the configuration where uh, we are calling this Prometheus endpoint, and the, there is a query. Uh, let me edit this query, and the query is basically giving us the CPU uh, 
uh, CPU percentage, right? Uh, at uh, the given point of time, and if it should less than fifty, otherwise it will fail. So same Prometheus query uh, is uh, there in this dashboard. So in this panel, basically, so we can see all the things in this panel, right? So let's quickly run this experiment and uh, see what's the state of the problem. So let me run this third experiment. So again, uh, three steps. Uh, we, we first, we'll install. Then, uh, uh, then execution of that uh, chaos app will happen, and then we'll clean up the experiments from the cluster. Yeah, again, uh, we are going back to Q and A. So, uh, Nilanjan, do we have any other questions? Yes, we do, Raj. And so many nice questions. Thank you so much, folks, for asking so many good questions. So, yeah, first, uh, I'll start with uh, Miladin. Sorry if I am completely butchering your name. So, he asked that, uh, can you target with two labels? I have a case where, let's say, I have two cart services, one active and one standby. So, I need to target with label app is equal to cart and stat status is equal to active. Uh, so the answer is no, actually, you cannot use more than one label. And there are quite a few reasons for that, essentially, because a single label can correspond to multiple uh, resources by nature. So usually you wouldn't need two labels, right? And uh, Speaking of your particular use case, Litmus actually will basically ignore uh, any pod, let's say, which is not in an active status, which is not running basically. So you wouldn't need that. But however, in practice, in theory, you can always add a global uh, label that will uh, group all the resources that you want to, uh, to target together, basically. So yeah, that's uh, it. And then Prithvi asks, can I use data day or other APM uh, pro uh, APMs other than Prometheus in the resilience probes? Uh, the answer is yes, because you can use the command probe as Raj is showing, for example, for kubectl. Similarly, for uh, other APMs also, say you're using Datadog, New Relic, any of it, uh, you can uh, use the command probe to invoke the APIs that should be able to query uh, your APM tool and then fetch the metrics based on which you can then able to uh, compare and you know make your uh, hypothesis. Uh, Prithvi then again asks, if we have some dependencies for the script I want to run as part of the command probe, how can I achieve that? Uh, that's a very nice question. Thank you for asking that, Prithvi. So we can basically use the uh, source probe mode for the command probe. So let's say you have a lot of application dependencies. And as we normally do, using Docker, we can make a nice image out of it. So it will contain all the different dependencies that your script uses. Now, you can use a source probe command uh, probe, which, not, which is nothing but an independent probe uh, pod, which will be running in your uh, target infrastructure. So this individual probe pod will basically ensure that you have all your dependencies as you're executing your uh, hypothesis condition. And therefore, you should be able to like very write very complex scripts as well. You should be able to introduce different binaries, different, uh, uh, different uh, CLIs, and so on. Moving on to the next question, Miladin asks how we can set HTTP proof for microservice, which is not exposed to public, only inside KTS to communicate with other service. I can use IP of service in KTS, but name of the service is not working for me. So I'm wondering, is there other way? Because IP is randomly added by KTS. You can definitely use the FQDN, Miladin, like uh, as Raj was showing right a uh, few moments ago. We are using the FQDN for the cards service in order to target and check the HTTP status of that uh, service, right? So that is definitely uh, achievable, and you can do that. Uh, OK, I think the fault has ended. Uh, we'll definitely mm -hmm. dive right into Q&A, but Raj, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Thank you. So again, uh, it failed with, uh, with it, it completed with failure. So we'll check the probes again. So let me go back and quickly refresh. and. Uh, uh, so in our case, both probes failed. So the first probe failed because the expected value, like uh, which is from the kubectl top command, right? It, it was around 103 percentage, right? And we are expecting 50 percentage. And the same we can see in the dashboard, right? So we are, we are approx 100 and something, 100 plus uh, 
uh, it, it is going up uh, approx 100 and 105 so due to which it got failed right so it is not able to uh, uh, keep the uh, value below the threshold right and you can see the profile because of the uh, it passes the threshold value the second probe uh, failed because of the uh, value from the prometheus right so the prometheus was giving like more than 50 percent right and uh, uh, and uh, so this is the random value because both executed at the random time so that's why the, you can see the 103 percent and here and here 61 percent right so the uh, the value excrete the threshold value and due to which this probe failed and uh, ultimately uh, we have the resiliency score zero because both probe failed and ultimately we, we are considering this experiment as non non-resilient experiment and yeah, uh, I think we have uh, we have three experiment uh, which we demonstrated and uh, with multiple uh, fault uh, multiple probe combination, right? Uh, we have uh, we have demonstrated the HTTP, then we have uh, Pro Prometheus probe and CMD probe, and there's one more probe which we haven't demonstrated is the Kubernetes probe. So in Kubernetes probe, what we can do is uh, we can uh, check a particular resource or uh, uh, like, let's say pod or deployment is present during the during the chaos or not so that we uh, that is also already present in the so you can uh, probably check check this out uh, later right and we have one more experiment but i think due to the uh, time constraint I, I think we should move to q a right and then uh, uh, i sure. hope we have some more questions left yeah yeah we do have a lot more questions so <clears throat> uh, raj would you like to answer any of them otherwise i can take them yeah you can go ahead uh, let me okay okay so yeah panduka asks would running these experiments under load for a service slash SUT service under test, I'm assuming, make more sense? Definitely, uh, you can definitely have a load balancer, uh, excuse me, not load balancer, a load generator in parallel to your chaos experiment, which is running. So as you understand, chaos experiment or the way we define our chaos experiments is a declarative manifest. And it's nothing but a... Uh, Argo uh, workflow manifest. So basically you can define an Argo workflow step in parallel to your chaos experiment, wherein you can have a, some kind of a load uh, generator working. So that will create some artificial traffic, let's say for your uh, application. And yeah, it will definitely make more sense because that will very closely correspond to the real world scenario, which is very important while doing chaos experiments. Thank you for that question. Next, we have a question from Devon. He asked that, do we have a latest video demonstrating the installation of Litmus Chaos using both kubectl and Helm? I followed the documentation and the subscriber pod was getting into crash loop. Thanks. Uh, so sorry to hear that, Devin, but definitely we can help you uh, get there. So if you haven't already, please join the Litmus Chaos channel in the Kubernetes Slack. We are all present over there and I'll also try to like help you uh, for debugging why you're getting a crash loop. But yeah, unfortunately, we don't have a video as of yet. But yeah, we'll definitely help you debug your issue. Venu then asks, are chaos pipelines tangential to regular test jobs? Or are they integrated together? Of course, you can integrate together with your other pipelines as well. So as I was uh, trying to instill the previous uh, question that you had asked, that how we can uh, like left shift the entire uh, chaos experiments. In that same pipelines where you are, let's say, testing your unit tests, you know, you're doing a trivia uh, vulnerability scan. You can definitely add a, you can definitely add a chaos experiment as well because Litmus ha also provides the APIs that can enable you to do so. Essentially, what it would look like in practices, in your GitHub CI or your Circle CI, you will define a step wherein you will call a Litmus API that will run a chaos experiment and target the applications or the microservices that you want to target. So let's say an application deployment will happen, a CD step will be uh, previous to this, which will uh, deploy your application in a test environment. And then you can define the CI step, which will run the chaos experiments to target the targets that are in the test environment. So that's what a functional chaos uh, CI CD integration might look like. Next question by, is by Lawrence. So they ask that if you want to target, uh, test several separate applications in parallel in the same target cluster, 
should you have different agents for each namespace absolutely not so litmus actually provides two way of installation one is the cluster mode and second is the uh, namespace mode in cluster mode basically you allow litmus agent to target chaos across the entire cluster so as it might be useful let's say in your case it also possesses a slight risk that you end up targeting an application which you do not want to target so that's where the namespace mode, uh, namespace mode helps it contains the chaos it basically makes sure that your uh, blast radius is contained okay the next question is by prithvi can the experiment automatically stop if a probe fails yes it can definitely be stopped there's a feature called stop on failure uh, provided as part of every probe which will essentially stop the experiment execution as soon as the probe fails so this essentially helps uh, your application's uh, health to be preserved. Let's say that it's deviating in a place where your your application is not, uh, you know, it's going to be harmed, and you can sense that on, uh, you know, um, when you're targeting the chaos. So you can definitely turn on the stop on failure, and that will stop the experiment. All right. Uh, then we have a question. Uh, Milan, Jan, uh, I think, uh, Probably we are a bit over right. time. We can take the next question. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, or we a... can maybe yeah. Yeah, yeah, just wanted to put this out here. Uh, if you have any more questions, please feel free to reach out in the Kubernetes Slack. We have a thread, I think, there. So please post all your questions there. I'll be personally be answering all of them. Over to you, Shan. 